How you doing? It's Look at Cloud Consulting and today we're going to cover AWS certification roadmap for beginners to pro. So first things first, why would you want to get certified? Well, there's going to be 28% more cloud jobs by 2029. That's mental. So the best way to learn skills obviously is doing projects and stuff, but start off with getting a fundamental basis of a cloud provider and follow a structured learning path to get there. Sure, you can buy a course online if you want, but I would say just use the free resources that are out there. And the easiest way to do that is to start with a beginner's fundamental certification. So let's start looking at the actual certifications themselves. So we have four tiers, foundation, associate, pro or professional, and then specialty. First things first, cloud practitioner. This is the very first certification you're gonna do for cloud. In AWS, it's cloud prac, cloud practitioner, and Azure, it's Azure Fundamentals, videos on the channel to teach you how to do that in 90 minutes. It's pretty simple one. Basically, it covers the fundamentals of what is cloud, and then it shows you how the AWS do it. Because if you think about it, cloud is a technical term, for like the cloud, but then Amazon, AWS, they're just a company who provide these cloud services. So it's like, how do they do it? Next certification that you'll do is the AI practitioner. This isn't only for people who want to get into AI, this is for everyone. Because like it or not, your job is gonna be not taken over by AI, but in conjunction with AI. You're gonna have to use it to your advantage sooner rather than later. Even if you're 30 watching this and you're gonna work till you're 65, Think of where AI is going to be in 35 years. So get AI practitioner, get a fundamental basis of how this is working. So now that's out of the way, this is your first certification you're wanting to get. You're next going to move into the associate level. Now this associate level here, these are more role applicable certifications. So there's five general roles here. Let's look at them. SysOps admin. You may have heard if you're trying to get into cloud engineering that you should go into systems administration sys admin which is essentially making sure that the resources are running because if you think about it you have technology like a software and that software runs on some hardware somewhere someone has to manage that sys admin generally speaking so a sys ops admin is just the cloud version so that's we have this little guy here this is like your sys admin right sys ops admin is doing this except using a mouse and a keyboard and a screen because it's the cloud, right? Next up, we have developer associate. As you can imagine, this is for developers, so people who are coding. You might be wondering here, but AWS is the cloud. Well, it's to teach you how to develop on AWS because currently you maybe develop on your laptop. Well, instead, they're going to try and teach you how to best leverage the AWS resources for your coding. Next up, is Solutions Architect Associate. This is the one that I have. A Solutions Architect is someone who designs the architecture. So in this context, it's cloud architecture. So this kind of diagram here, there will be a Solutions Architect and a bunch of other guys looking at the business requirements and turning them into kind of like some technical requirements into this diagram. Not just a Solutions Architect, that flow involves business analysts and a bunch of other people. But a solutions architect, they work with the architecture. So how do these services, each of these being a service, work together to create the final solution? And for me, that's the cloud engineer is my role, cloud consultant engineer. And solutions architect is the general one for cloud engineers, at least within my company. And the next one up, we'll talk about in a minute. But and that's just so that you can get a general overview of how it works because cloud engineer is not a standardized term in industry. It's just an engineer who works with the cloud. In solutions architecture, it gives you the, the, the greatest width of knowledge. And it's the least kind of specialized, if for want of a better term. Next up, we have data engineer. So now we're moving towards this kind of AI side of things. Data engineers focus on getting data from one place to another, essentially, and transforming it through that process. So for example, here we have an ELT pipeline, which is extract, load, transform, meaning extract, get the data, load, put the data somewhere, transform, change the data so it's in a way that you want it to be. So example here is the sources. This could be some API endpoints, or it could be an on-prem database or whatever it may be. You extract that, say into the cloud, you then load it into somewhere like a data warehouse. So this is some centralized storage for the data. You analyze it, change little bits, and then now it's here 
This can be, say, for business intelligence, BI. So that's how you get like Power BI, Power Business Intelligence, which is like looking at the business data so that you can make informed decisions. Or it could go to data scientists or whatever. So that's kind of the role of a data engineer. On the channel, we have an Azure data engineer walk through a tutorial. It's two and a half hours long, but you'll get a full understanding of how this works in Azure and free credits, etc. using Azure. That's why I've done it. So if you want to, to upskill yourself in data engineering, go and have a look at that. Finally, on this associate level, we have machine learning engineer. Again, on this AI side. Now, a machine learning engineer is kind of the intersection between a data scientist and a software engineer. Software engineer working with code, data scientist working with data. Machine learning models are built on data. That's why you need data to feed them to get the information, etc. So data engineers work really closely with data scientists, machine learning engineers, because they are facilitating the, the machine learning or the data science by getting the data there. So machine learning engineers, they'll be working with machine learning models and engineering them to get some sort of business outcome. So that's the associate level. So we have foundation and associate. So this is entry into cloud. You know a little bit. Next, we have the professional level. This is for people with two years experience or more within their kind of field. So the first thing we have here is the Solutions Architect Pro. That's the one that I almost slipped out earlier. That's the natural progression for this Solutions Architect Associate. Solutions Architect Professional is just a deeper version of the Associate one. And then the other is DevOps Engineer, which isn't actually captured here, but DevOps Engineer is kind of like the level up from this kind of sysadmin and also developer, because as we've spoken about before, this developer certification doesn't teach you how to be a developer, but it's how to develop within AWS. And a DevOps engineer is someone who is the kind of intersection between development and operations. Development is the code, operations are the hardware components. DevOps professionals, they ensure that code is continually improved, and continually delivered, and they try to automate this process as much as possible. Next layer up, final layer, we have specialties. Now, these are when, you know, you're really deep into a role, probably like three to five years experience, you'd maybe go for these. Advanced networking. This is all about how AWS networking actually works on a much deeper level, like interconnectedly. So the solutions architect, for example, this will talk about how things network together. You look at VNets and subnets, etc. But advanced networking specialty is looking at those edge cases. Next up, machine learning specialty. Again, it's the deeper version of this machine learning engineer associate. And finally, we have the security specialty. And the security specialty, again, it's kind of like the networking one, that there is so much in AWS that there is a specialty version of learning everything because there's just so much to learn, hence why you go for the specialty. Now, one thing to mention just before you go is that if you do complete the AI practitioner or the machine learning engineer before February 2025, you will get this early adopters badge because they had only released this data engineering and machine learning stuff this year in 2024. So go and get an extra badge if, if you're up for it. But yeah, so there you go. That is the certifications in AWS. Now hold on before you go and get a certification. First check out this video to see our certifications actually worthless. And if you have any comments, questions, queries, let me know below. Sign up to the newsletter it will be the first link in the description. Till next time, take care.